Are you taking way too long to solve a single question on the SAT math section? Do you hate SAT math? Does a math section on the SAT make your palms sweaty, knees weak, and arms heavy? Every time you do a math section on the SAT, does it make you want to drop out of high school and become a drug dealer? If that's you, you came to the right channel. Today, we're going to go over how you can solve questions super quickly and not become a drug dealer. If it's your first time here, my name is John and I've been helping students raise their SAT score to the moon for the past decade. And if they can raise their score and if I can raise my own score, I, I, I did in high school, got a perfect score in math section. If everyone can do it, I'm sure you can do it too. So I hear that you are struggling with time. You're taking way too long to solve a single question. Here's exactly why. You see a question and you're taking way too long to come up with the right approach, right method to solve this question. And the reason why this happening is because you're weak on concepts. Let me explain. If you have a really strong understanding, like a solid foundation on concepts, then you're gonna know exactly what to use for each kind of scenario. So let me give you a more realistic example. Let's say we're trying to staple these papers together and in front of you, there are there's a pencil, there's an eraser, and there's a stapler. Obviously, the answer is a stapler, right? Because the whole purpose of a stapler is to staple these papers together. So if a question is asking you to staple the papers together, without a doubt, without even considering a pencil or an eraser, you're gonna go straight into a stapler, right? If you have a strong understanding that the purpose of a stapler is to staple the papers together, then solving this question is only gonna take you like a second or two. But on the SAT, if they give you a similar question and you have to go through like a pencil, an eraser, and get to the stapler, that's why you're spending so much time on that specific question because you don't know what you have to use for that specific scenario. And the reason you don't know is because you are weak on concepts. Every single concept, there is a purpose behind it. For like a quadratic formula, the purpose is for you to find the zeros or the roots or like where they cross the x-intercepts. And the purpose behind a slope formula is for you to find a slope of a line. Obviously, you wouldn't use a slope formula to a parabola or like a cubic function, right? And you're probably thinking it's really stupid for people to use a slope formula to a parabola, but chances are you're probably doing something similar just in different forms, just different types of questions. And as a result, you spend about three to five minutes on a specific question, trying a pencil and eraser and realizing that it just, it just doesn't work. And it takes you that long to get to a stapler. And when you get to the next question, same thing's happening over and over. You're trying pencil, eraser, stuff that just doesn't work on that specific question. And after this happens multiple times, you realize that time's almost up and you have 10 more questions to go. So how can we prevent this from happening? How can we solve these questions right away? How can we realize what to use the moment we see the question? The answer is you have to have a strong understanding of the concepts. That's the only way you can get faster and quicker and solve the questions without worrying about time. Let me tell you about one of my students. One student came and he was i think he was in the beginning 600 like the low 600s and i asked him hey what's your like what's the issue what's the issue that you're having with sat right now and he tells me hey i'm having trouble with time i get to like the 10th question and i have like 10 more questions to go and i only have like five minutes left and time is such a big issue and then i tell him the exact same thing hey the reason why you're having time issue is because you're spending way too much time trying to figure out what you have to do for that specific question and if that keeps on happening and happening and happening you, you just you just don't have enough time if you have unlimited time then you can probably solve everything but with 25 minutes for 20 questions on section three it's, it's just not going to happen so how we can fix that is by having a strong understanding of the concepts so that every time you see a question you know exactly you know exactly what to do when you see a stack of paper you can pick up the stapler right away without even thinking about the pencil or an eraser to get a better understanding of coming up with it like right away let me give you a couple examples for you to get a better understanding if you look at this question right here, it says, how many ordered pairs satisfy the system of equations shown above? Okay, so on the top, we have two functions. And the first thing we realize is that first one is going to be a line because the highest exponent is one. And second one, it's factored like that. And the highest exponent will be two. So we know that this is a parabola. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for a number of ordered pairs that satisfy the system, right? What that means is we're looking for a number of intersections between these two graphs, okay? So if there's a line and if there's a parabola, the concept that you have to use here is going to be discriminant because discriminant gives you the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. Did you see, do you guys just see how that worked? On, in back of my head, I, I knew that discriminant, you use that when you're trying to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. 
And once a question tells me to use, I mean, and once a question tells me to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola, like that, I knew that I had to use discriminant. I'm not gonna do quadratic formula. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try to find the slope of the line. I'm not gonna do any of that because I know that's not going to give me the answer. I know exactly that discriminant is what we need to use in this question, in this scenario. So I'm gonna use it right away and I'm gonna to get to the answer. Let's look at the next example, which of the following is an equivalent form of the function f above in which the minimum value of f appears as constant or coefficient, okay? So what we're trying to do here is represent the minimum value of the function as a constant or coefficient. So once we look at the equation above, f of x equal whatever, we realize that it's in the factor form again, so we know it's going to have the highest exponent of 2, and it's going to be in the shape of a parabola. And shape of a parabola, the minimum value of f, which is referring to the minimum y value, we know that that happens where the vertex is. Vertex is either the minimum or the maximum. And what we're trying to do is represent the minimum value as a constant or coefficient which means we're just trying to show the vertex as numbers on the function. And which concept do we have to use here? We have to use the vertex form, which is y is equal to a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. And the vertex form shows you where the vertex is in terms of numbers, which is constants, right? Because h and k represent the vertex. And if you have no idea what I just talked about, you are probably lacking in concepts. And if you see this question, you're not going to know what to do right away. And that's why I'm saying it's so important for you to have strong understanding of the concepts. Otherwise, you're going to see a question and you're not going to know what to, use, what to do. You're going to try a pencil, you're going to try a razor, and finally get to the stapler after 10 minutes of trying stuff that just doesn't work. Based on my experience, students who got 750 plus on the math section because they can find out exactly what they have to use for each question so quickly, on average, all my students who get the highest score on the SAT or like a perfect score, they usually have about 10 minutes left on the section three and about 15 to 20 minutes left on section four. See, it, time's never an issue for those people because they see a question and they know, they know exactly what to do. The reason why you are struggling with time is because you look at the question and you try different stuff that just doesn't work and it takes you too long to get to the stapler, the right method. So let's summarize today's video. The reason you're having time issues is because you're spending way too much time trying to come up with the right method. And the reason why you're struggling to come up with the right method is because you are weak on concepts. You don't know what to do for each scenario. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys found this video valuable. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button. If you're preparing for the SAT and you want to rate your SAT math score, there's going to be a link in the link in the description box below where it's a Facebook group of a highly motivated high school students who are also trying to raise their SAT score. And I'm also in there too. So if you guys have any concerns or questions about math section, I'll go there, answer all your questions and make sure that you're going the right direction. Guys, with work and right guidance, you are guaranteed to raise your SAT score. There's no way that your score is not going to go up. So don't give up. Keep putting in the effort and you will get to the score that you're looking for. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. So no bullshit, girl, nothing extra Girl, I ain't playing games I wanna take your whole